Hi, my name is Ed Ross. My name is Ed Ross, and I'm with Community Stepping Stone. And Zen, um, one of the things is, is that our mission is to save children, youth, and community lives through the arts. And what it is is art is essential for our species, and this is one of the hardest things for people to understand. Without art, we would have no cohesion. The function of art, anthropologically speaking, is social cohesion of any group or society. And it's really difficult to understand that in this, car, in this country because what happens is, is that um, you look at the statistics and about only 6% of the population has ever gone to an art museum and less than 3% of the population ever goes to an art show. So by those statistics, you would be able to say, well, you know, art is not important. But that's not what art is exactly in this country. The art that's in this country that is social cohesion is advertising. That's the major form of art in this country. And when you realize that, you realize that that dictates almost everything we do, how we dress, how we behave, all the songs, everything. And it's a media that is the one that is ingrained into us, that begins to manipulate us. And what we do, when you are working with arts, you're beginning to take that media and give them, students and other people, the power to control the media that usually controls them. But also on top of that, you give them control of it so that they can use it to express themselves, to be able to, and I don't mean just express yourself, you know, in some like flowery kind of thing. I mean like this. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Almost, not good enough. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, that's better. Now, see, one of those things is, notice that the first time I did it, when I, before I got up here, you know, some people say good morning. Nobody smiled very much. You know, they're good morning. Okay. Polite smile. And then the second time I did that, some people would, you know. But the last time, everybody was smiling. And what that means, these little things are so important because if, oh, by the way, I do have a question before I go. So I've got my population here. How many of y'all are, have been, or, or are our teachers? Oh, okay. Then I, that gives me an idea. So then what happens is, um, when we do that, we don't realize these message codes of how we interact with people. And what it is is the lacking of respect in this country is very, very problematic. And so if you notice that when you say good morning to somebody, what you're really saying to them, this, it's a message code, or hi, how's it going, is a message code that says, you are important in my life and I'm acknowledging it. That's what you're really doing. Because when somebody says, hey, how's it going? You know they don't want to hear how's it going. But you're walking down the street, you know, or you're in a campus, or you're doing anything, and you're walking down there, you don't say hi to everybody that's going by. You only say hi to people that are important to you, right? Or that you know. And so therefore, you're acknowledging their existence and saying you are an important person. See the difference? That's what art teaches you. It's some of those kinds of skills that will start to get you to fill those respect. Another thing that we do, we work um, <coughs> Community Stepping Stones is a nonprofit organization, and we work, this is supposed to go to the next one. There we go. We work in a population, you don't have to look at those statistics if you want, but you know, y'all are all familiar with them. But basically how this translates is, the translation of what these statistics say is, is that 85% of the adults in our neighborhood on a recent survey have never completed high school or have a GED. So the idea of education, the idea of even graduating from high school is non-existence. And if you've looked at the recent, which I assume all of y'all have seen the recent statistics of especially minorities, especially blacks or Afro-Americans, if they don't complete high school, there's over a 75% chance that their business in life will be jail. That's their business. So one of our major missions is to get every kid to graduate from high school, at least, and to have the ability to go to college. That's it. That's it. Now, not everybody needs to go to college, because if you're a mechanic and stuff, you don't need that. But at least they should have the right to choose to go to college. And that's what I explained to them. <clears throat> and so another thing is, they've never been exposed to college students. You know in the research and stuff that if you take children to a college campus, the, the, the number of children that go to college increases, right? Just showing them. It's like a foreign country to them. 
And so one of the things that we do is we use, I teach a class at USF, it's a community arts class, and I use my students in the college classes to come into the classroom and teach the kids. And by doing that, it makes college real to them. They're like ambassadors from some foreign country. And for the first time in their lives, they have never talked, never talked to somebody who is in college. And they don't consider talking to them. I mean, they somewhere know that all teachers went to college, but they don't consider them somebody, right? In that sense. I mean, really, you know, they're just like this authority thing. So there's no real personal relationship. Sometimes there are, but you know, there's that, that barrier. That barrier that happens in there. And so art is one of those things where significant communication, when you communicate with somebody, whether they agree or disagree with you, there has been a, a, a deep type of communication that begins to happen. And then what we do is not only do we take them to USF or to HCC, which is our local community college, but we have shows there where they go into the uh, university and they succeed. They're in shows in galleries that only graduate students and professional artists can show in, and professors. So they already see they can succeed in college. And the way we do it, through the arts. So, um, whoops. So what we do is we have like what's called a holistic or an ecological model of things. I started off in marine zoology in the 60s in, in, uh, at USF. And one of the things that we felt like we understood is, is if you understood everything about this plant and animal, and this plant and animal, and this plant and animal, then you can understand the system and how it works. And, we and now we know that that doesn't work at all. To give you an idea, you know, there's this big thing that was going on just a couple of years ago about reintroducing the wolves in, in, um, out in Yellowstone National Park in the mountains. And what happened is, is they got rid of them because occasionally a wolf would get a calf or something. But what happened is, is that they got rid of a wolf and the wolf eat porcupines. The porcupines eat the bites, the bark of a pine tree. And now there's the pine beetles and the entire western slope of the Rockies is in total collapse. And for y'all that are out west, you know all those red trees you see, they're all dead from the pine beetle. And it's flipped the divide and it's coming over onto the eastern slope of the Rockies. Because what we did is we didn't realize how important everything is. Everything is. And what happened is, is now we're reintroducing them. And then they call people like me uh, environmental wackos, you know? But what we're doing is trying to find that harmony, that balance. So you can see that what we do is we have a number of different programs that we work with. But first of all, before we go on, there's a major misunderstanding in this country about what art is, or in this culture, I should say. I spent uh, uh, 12, uh, 14 years studying art and culture and religion in small-scale societies of Indonesia and uh, Central Africa, looking for models that we could use in this country to, uh, to enhance our way of learning and stuff like that. First of all, I should let you know that everybody in those societies is an artist on multiple levels of art, and it's used to develop concepts and ideas and to tie those side societies together. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And that can be then extrapolated to say it, it, it ties subjects together. Now, I ask my students but at the art department, or I've, I've asked a number of people who have taught art, you know, when we're at the booth down here, and I ask them for a definition of art. How many definitions do you think that I get? Go ahead, somebody just say a number. A million, yeah, right. Everybody has a different definition. So if you think about that, there is no definition for art. There is no definition because a definition, if you think about it, a definition, a folk definition is the common agreement amongst a group of people on the meaning of a word. Right? That's what it is. And when it's large enough, it gets in the dictionary. So we could, in this room, decide that any time we talk about cats, we're talking about art. And as long as it's so you and I talking to each other, or are you all talking amongst yourself, then we're talking about art. But as soon as you go outside of here, everybody says, you're crazy. You see, so it's not a functional definition. And so what, so what I'm going to do is to show you a definition of art. And it's this. It's, first of all, culturally significant communication. If it is not culturally significant communication, it is not art. 
And so in my college classes, if somebody's in a studio class with me, and they make a piece of art, and you've seen this before, and you've probably heard it, and, they, and, and everybody has a different interpretation of it, and it's not what they want, they flunk. Because they're not communicating. You know? Does that make sense? You have to be able to communicate with somebody in order to make art, and it has to be culturally significant. So if you really think about it, math, science, physics, is all art. It has to communicate to people, you know, about what the world is. A lot of people don't realize that in science, one of the things about science, it, is had, it has to accurately predict the future. Did you know that? A lot of people say, well, science, you know, it's all this stuff. It has to accurately predict the future. If it doesn't, it's outside the realm of science. What art does is it has to, act, it has to <laughs> accurately communicate with people. Now, this art, and you have to have all four parts of these definitions, and so this is how I have my students teach and learn, but, and if they're going to teach, this is how they would teach art. The second thing is it's carried in a meta set of message codes that are dependent upon time and place. Now, these message codes are very, very, very deep in us, and a lot of people don't get it because they've never been learned to read art. You've learned to read writing and math, hopefully, right? But look at how many years you've done it. You know, if you went to college, I mean, even through high school, you've, you've at least spent, you know, 14 years in school learning how to read and write. And not yet, most people don't know how to do that. And if you really think about it, we're at a four and a half grade level of education in this country. 20 years ago, we were at a sixth grade level. And that's on any subject. It doesn't matter whether you're a PhD in physics. Your understanding of um, geology or, or geography or something might be at a fourth grade level. So what stopped this from learning? It's not just the teachers, and it's not that, but it's, it, there's a certain systems in place. And this is where we get it going. I'm going to give you an example of message codes, OK? This is one where you really have to answer me to the first thing that comes to your mind, OK? If you are feeling really angry, what colors would you associate with it? Everybody say it. Red. Okay, that's a message code. Red and black. If you ask hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people what that is, you will find that with very rare exceptions, anybody will say other than black, red, and sometimes orange. That's a message code. Color message codes. Now think about when you go into writing, when you're trying to teach writing. Isn't that what we always do in the classes, is to give somebody something that gives them a handle on how and the place, time, answers the question, who, what, when, where, and how, and why? That's what writing is. The kids all get in there, and I was like this. I mean, I was terrible until I got into art. I was so terrible that my first class in college was a writing class. You had to take them, you know, you know, the basic studies classes. And I handed in my paper, and I got it back and said, this paper is so bad, it does not even deserve an F. That's my level of writing. The second paper, I did improve a lot. She said, this is a vast improvement. You flunked. <laughs> the next one I got a D on, and I thought, well, I'm going to flunk the class anyway, you know, because the semester is going on. Because I had never really been exposed to art. Once I was exposed to art, I realized that when I'm working on a painting, I'm drawing a line, those things have to mean something. Think about this, angry again, OK? If you are making lines, and you are angry, what kind of lines are you going to have? Thick jacket. Thick jacket, right? Do, 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 right? It's not going to be like this. When we look at art, we look at ourselves, right? That's what you do. We, have to, we as a species anthropomorphize everything. And so, i got to keep an eye on my time, especially since I started like, boom. So, when did it, so anyway, when does this end? Oh, OK, good. So I get this, but this is a very important thing for anybody that's going into art. It doesn't matter what you do, you can make it happen. But you have to know history. That's what dependent upon time and place is. You have to know your history, and you have to know more than that. Then it's done in a sensuous medium. I just gave you what it is. Those kinds of lines and stuff express the senses. So it has to go deep inside of you. It has to be felt somewhere. And if you're not using your senses like a jacket, black line of hate, 
you're not going to get anybody there. Hate, just the word hate doesn't mean anything. 